Church. This is Eudora. She's 39 and has significant disease in her coronary arteries, but she feels fine, and so she thinks she is fine. That's because atherosclerosis is usually asymptomatic until it leads to complications, <laughs> like myocardial infarction or angina, as it will for Eudora, who will have a heart attack at age 44 and die suddenly with no warning and no chance to say goodbye to those she loves. Or maybe Eudora will be lucky and survive her heart attack. Still, the damage in her heart could limit her physical capabilities for the rest of her life. We tend to think that heart attacks and strokes are rare in younger people. But sadly, research shows that 46% of cardiovascular events happen to people in the 45 to 64 year old age bracket. We can do better. But first, we need to understand what happened to Eudora. We all have cholesterol in our blood. It's contained in the ApoB lipoprotein particle. These particles can enter our arterial walls and then pass harmlessly through. If they do, no problem. Or, some of these particles can get trapped in the wall and, over time, cause atherosclerosis, which in turn causes heart attacks and strokes. The higher the number of ApoB particles in our blood, the greater the risk of atherosclerosis, and so we should be measuring the number of particles to estimate this risk. But instead, most doctors today measure LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol inside the ApoB particles. But the amount of bad cholesterol doesn't give us the number of particles, because some particles have more cholesterol than others. And research shows that the number of ApoB particles measures cardiovascular risk more accurately than LDL cholesterol. Eudora, for example, had a normal LDL cholesterol, but high ApoB. Uh-oh. Eudora was at high risk because she had a high number of ApoB particles and didn't know it. But we can test her ApoB. And if we'd done it early, we would have caught her cardiovascular disease when it was just beginning and known why it was happening. We would have treated her with statins. Thank you. Which would have lowered both the number of particles in her blood and her cholesterol and would have therefore reduced the number of particles that injured her arterial wall by depositing cholesterol there. We would have prevented new plaques from forming and helped old ones to heal. Yes! But that is not what happened. Oh, no. What happened is that we did nothing to help Eudora. Based on our current cardiovascular risk model, only a small minority of 45 to 64 year olds are eligible for prevention. And people like Eudora, who have very high levels of ApoB at a young age, are missed. Instead, we focus on people like Jack, who's just turned 65, which is when we see a steep increase in the risk of cardiovascular events in the population. His level of ApoB in his blood is not as high as Eudora's, but it's high enough to produce significant disease after several decades of exposure. And so we'll treat him with statins to reduce his risk of a heart attack or a stroke. But we won't be able to reverse all of the damage that his arteries sustained over the many years that his disease went undiagnosed. Shifting our approach for earlier detection through early ApoB measurement would have helped Jack too, because we would have caught him before his arteries sustained substantial damage. That is the benefit of early ApoB testing and treatment. So what can you do to help? You can spread the word about high ApoB risks and the benefits of early measurement and treatment. Let's work together to make a difference in the fight against cardiovascular disease. Remember, by identifying and treating high ApoB individuals when they're younger, we can change the course of their lives and pave the way to a healthier future. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your healthcare providers. And tell them to visit apob.ca today for more info on how to manage your ApoB levels for a longer and healthier life.